So from the UN, we have followed this news all week, and now this. Silence is despicable. The women who were raped and murdered on October 7th will maybe silent forever, but justice will be done. Truth shall prevail. We will never forget them. A stirring speech by Israel's former Miss World at the United Nations. The Jewish state pressing the UN to investigate the horrific sexual violence committed by Hamas terrorists on October 7th, including rape and mutilation. Lenore Abargriel, excuse me, is also a victim of sexual assault, and she joins us now. And that story of what you went through came out just before, right around when you won Miss World. So your story was out there for everybody to know, and you've been quite an amazing advocate. What was it like um, at the United Nations giving that speech? Wow, um, didn't expect that at all, to be so uh, emotional, strong. I didn't expect that people will respond to what happened um, to my, my story and to what happened to the Israeli women. Uh, I mean, I think uh, something changed since my uh, speech, a little mm. bit. Mm. Uh, we still have a long way. The thing is, you know, for me, 25 years ago, when I promote my film, Brave Miss World, it was on Netflix for like 10 years, uh, it was an Emmy nomination. It has, you know, people watching it from all over the world. And I felt the UN were supporting me, uh, believed me. They didn't ask for any investigation then. But today, I feel so ashamed that I was a part of this organization and any other women organization mm -hmm. that are so silent and didn't condemn Hamas even once, except one time on Friday evening when they say in the same sentence that they they alarmed by what happened to the Israeli woman, by the sexual assault, and then in the same sentence they say uh, that they are very worried about Palestinian women and that we have to have a ceasefire. The ambassador from the Czech Republic a month ago at the UN said, why is my country even an organization here? Why, why are we even involved in the UN? And when you go to the UN, you, you know what you're up against. I mean, you're pushing a big rock up a hill, and you, whether or not you're even making progress. Couple things now. We've had significant women's groups in America that have said nothing about rape. We can put it on screen and uh, show everybody. World Health Organization, Emily's List, a Women's March, uh, I stand with her, and on and on the list goes. Yeah. Uh, I want you to listen to your Israeli Prime Minister. This is Benjamin Netanyahu from yesterday on this very topic. I say to the women's rights organizations, to the human rights organizations, you've heard of the rape of Israeli women, horrible atrocities, sexual mutilation. Where the hell are you? Mm. Can you answer that? Yeah. You know, it's... Um... It's me too, unless you are a Jew. That's it. It's hard, it's hard for me to say that, but this is the truth. You know, what women organization did is it, they took it to the political side. Mm -hmm. It's not about political. It's not about free Palestine. It's not about which side you are on the map. To use rape as an act of war It's unbearable. I mean, what happened to humanity? You know, there is um, one of my friends. Sorry, it's very hard for me to speak about it. It's OK. Take your time. Before I, I arrived here, he, he told me a story about this young woman, woman, that he saw a video of her, that she was raped by 10 Hamas people. One after another raped her. A young woman. Screaming, they beat in her. They spit in her. They then butchered her. And then one of them took her cell phone and just sent everything to her mother. Mm -hmm. Her screaming just haunts my friend. Every, every night he's trying to sleep. And her screaming should be out there for all the world to shout out, out for mm -hmm. this girl that is not here to shout for herself. But instead, all the women organizations are just silent. I mean, 
I'm telling you, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I'm, I, have, I have nothing. Yeah. There's, there, our... there's no humanity in what you're describing to mm -hmm. us. It's just, it's absent. The North, for those exactly right. hostages who have been released, and we know that there were sexual assaults perpetrated against them during their captivity, from your experience, what kind of help and support will they need and can we help provide to them as they recover? I think the first help you can do is for us to believe. Mm -hmm. Because when, you, when, when you, somebody goes through something so bad, you have to first believe and support him. And that's the basic. You cannot go, you know, do anything if you don't have that. What just kills my heart now is just uh, the fact that there are so many hostages that are still there going through I don't know what. And the world is silent. But in Boko Haram they spoke, in Ukraine they spoke, and now it's just like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're very brave. Uh, and you are not silent. Here. I'm not. And we're glad uh, to have you. Thank you so much. And have a safe trip. Here. Sorry, Sorry, Sorry okay. I'm not shaking hands. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. Stay strong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stay strong and healthy. <laughs> Indeed. Thank right. you so much for everything you do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for being here. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.